This is a really important screen, especially if you have technicians that are actually applying the treatment to clients or you're doing remote training. It gives the trainee an option to look at and refer to if it's been a couple of days since they've trained to see exactly where do the electrodes go. Going up to active one in the upper left hand corner, we notice that for instance this happens to be C4. So knowing our neural feedback, more than likely we'd want that at C3. So see how I can make that adjustment? And if you click on the arrow, you see a lot of the 1020 sites, okay? We simply click C3 and it appears. We then have the same option for reference one and the same option for ground, okay? If this was two channel, we'd also want to set up our reference two in active two. Okay. As we look over to the left, we also see an option for use mini Q head box. If we were doing a mini Q and we had the additional hardware of a mini Q, if we select this and we check this, it automatically in the reports tells you that you used a mini Q. The sites that you refer to above no longer are relative, but we're not doing that today. So I'm simply going to uncheck that. We also give you a little 1020 reference guide here so that you can visualize which sites you're using. And then as you notice as I scroll down, we have a couple optional available choices here. Um, we notice we have an age in a colon and it says optional, must be non-zero to use Z-score training. So us having a zero means we're not using Z-scores. If we were using the dynamic Z-score DLL for training purposes for a targeting strategy, we would actually enter the age of the client and then we also decide what is the condition it's required for the Z-score training. Were they using eyes open training or eyes closed? Since we're not doing Z-scores, this does not become relative. Okay. As we then scroll slightly to the right, we always want to close these boxes as we've made changes with the OK button. If we close with the red X in the right corner, right upper corner, that will not save changes. Only the OK will save changes. So then we click OK. OK, that does take us back to the data channels window. We've made all of our different decisions, our couple little changes. And again, we don't want to close with the X up at the right hand corner. We want to simply close with OK. OK, it then returns us back to set up options. And now all of our decisions under data channels are we're done. We see that it gives us a summary number of channels one. Sample rate 256 filter order three artifact rejection threshold 240 microvolts. We're on COM4, some channels is off, save EEG to disk is off, again, only needed for recording purposes. Peak to peak is on, and the sites that we'll be training today are C3, A1, and A2. Scrolling back slightly over to the left, we see our next button is frequency bands. As I click frequency bands, we get yet another control box. And going through this list, we'll notice we have all of the components listed. Delta, theta, alpha, low beta, going back up to the top on the right side, beta, high beta, gamma, and then user. Starting back at delta, these bands are standard set from their one to three hertz for delta, four to seven for theta and so on. These are fully adjustable. Not only can you rename the band to a label of your choice, the frequency bandwidth is fully customizable to your need. So for instance, if theta, we wanted to actually look from two hertz to seven hertz, we could simply swipe over the four, make it a two, and it's adjusted the bandwidth. Okay, we'll leave it at four for this purpose, but the adjustability is there. As I scroll slightly to the right and down, we notice a band called user. 
It happens to be parked up at 30 to 35 hertz, but this is just an extra component. You could use this for any of your needs. You could type in a, for instance, if we wanted to look at one band and call it Thalpha, this would be a combination band of theta and alpha. It may then be from 4.0 to 12 hertz, for instance. Even though we have a theta component and we have an alpha component, this will let us look at the combination of both. So again, just using, letting you know the flexibility that you can use the user band for it's whatever you decide. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit, as I scroll down to the middle of the box, if I've made any changes and I decide that's really not what I want and I simply want to go back to the original default settings, I simply click on standard settings. We notice then that user has changed back to the user band and it's parked itself back up at 30 to 35 hertz. Okay. The next option, which is new to 2.5 SC, is a dampening factor. This is used to slow value changes for text. For instance, there's a numerical display called numbers in which it's giving you a numeric value for theta, alpha, low beta, beta, and so on. But to see that number and be able to actually read it, you have to use a dampening factor or the number would be changing so fast you couldn't recognize it. Typical for that type of display is 100. You can then make it update a little faster or you can even slow it down by increasing it to, for instance, 150. Again, you can play with that and find out what suits your needs. At this point, after we've made our decisions in this box, again, we want to hit OK. So any changes that we've made, save. So I click OK. It's taken us back to setup options.